but if you look at it is if your family if you wanted to give your family a billion dollars yeah is that really giving them i mean is that really doing them a favor yeah um well, like we were talking about earlier is money the answer yeah right <laughs> right when you when you look at it that way i mean you go man if i if i could give my kids a billion dollars when i leave would yeah. that really be doing them a favor this episode of the podcast is brought to you by larclean a while ago my wife and i decided that we were going to permanently switch to solutions to clean our house that were safe to use around our kids and our pets and larclean offers exactly that they're powerful enough to be used in a medical setting and safe enough to be used around kids in fact there's no bleach no alcohol and it still kills 99 percent of germs so if you're listening to this podcast and you want to give it a try, head over to larklean.com and use code THINKING10 at checkout to save 10% off your order. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Kayla Potter and Life Unlimited Coaching. One of the best things that you can do for your personal well-being and your business, believe it or not, is getting your health and fitness on the right track. Kayla helps you do that by ditching the yo-yo dieting, getting the results you want, eating the foods you love, and living life on your own terms. In fact, she's even given our listeners today a free meal prep hack guide. You can check out that link in the description of this podcast. You can also check out all of her other coaching at lifeunlimitedpro.com. So go check out Kayla and get your life on track. Thank you so much for listening. Man, this is like way more professional than I'm used to. Yeah, what what <laughs> podcast have you done before? Well, I do I do the uh, Pitch Us podcast with Tim Cooley. I love Tim Cooley, and uh, we I just we just have a somebody come on remotely, okay, and present to us every week. Oh, and then wow. we uh, we give them feedback on their pitch deck, right right there on the podcast. Yeah, just and then, you, and then uh, other you know founders can come in and and you know, learn from the feedback we give to, to those fans. What's the best pitch you've ever heard? Um, or top mm, five one, I, maybe it's hard to pin down the top one, but one that when I asked that, what stuck out in your mind? Yeah. Um, actually Aaron was one that we got early. Aaron. Aaron. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know, Aren't Kate's they in here in Utah? Utah? Yeah. Caitlin yeah. and Claire, um, okay. they were one of the better ones. And I mean, so that was kind of fun. Yeah. What well, what made Aaron's, pitch deck and pitch stand out? Um, part of it was the, the founder, you know, okay. you kind of, you kind of, there's so many people that come in and they present and they haven't practiced their, their pitch and it just comes across as they're just winging it. Right. And you know, you, when you get somebody that comes in and knows their, their business really well, it, it just, it shows through. Yeah. And, and when, so when you say practiced a hundred times, I love this whole, I love this idea. So I'm going to ask you a million questions. <laughs> okay, probably, it's probably just for me. But what, what, uh, when you say he knew his business re really well, I think I have an idea, but tell, tell me more. So knowing what the levers are in your business, what is going to create success? Um, you know, whether on the financial side, seeing, you know, what are the real revenue drivers? What's going to make this company really take off? Um, and then having traction, you know, seeing that we've got some traction going, this is actually working. And so, you know, you kind of see that, okay, if you could put a little bit of money, uh, more money into this, they've already got a system going. They've yeah. already proven that, that there's product market fit and, you know, it, it becomes kind of obvious yeah. at that point. Um, whereas a lot of founders, they'll come in and they'll start, you know, talking and they'll, they'll go through their pitch deck and it's, it's not organized or whatever. Um, you know, and you can tell they, they haven't practiced and, and yeah, it's, it's just really apparent. Mm -hmm. um, I, th man, so many things come through my head because as a, as a founder, um, you've probably seen, I mean, and, and in the position you are, right. You, you've probably seen a lot of people where you're just like, have you ever said in your head when you're listening to these pitches, have you ever been like, wow, that's a great business. But I, this, but the whole delivery was, you know, have you ever kind yeah. of had it reversed where you're like, because maybe I, I'm assuming you're like, wow, that was great. But like, that's not going to work. Right. Well, well, I would say just the opposite happens as well. And probably okay. more often okay. is that, you know, it's not a great business, but the presenter is really well. Really okay. Great. That happens. More right. That probably can. happens more often, <laughs> which is, you know, I, I think yeah. both, both aren't great. You kind of right, have to have, right. to have all of that come together. <laughs> but I will say, especially in the early stages, you're, you, there's so much 
that's riding on the founder. So mm -hmm. if they can't build confidence in you as an investor, then it's over. So yeah. even if they've got the greatest idea in the world and you're like, yeah, this is going to work. If you don't have trust in them as a founder to ex actually execute on it, then it, it really doesn't matter right. how great the idea is. Right. Um, Which is so fascinating to me because, so is there a criteria that, I mean, there's probably not a checklist. I mean, it's probably a lot of like intuition and maybe, you know, a lot of the data, but is there, is there, is there like a hierarchy of things like that you check off before you get to like the point of being like, we'll write the check or we're not going to write the check. Yeah. And I, I think it's not just about the founder, but it's, it's the confidence that you get throughout their presentation mm -hmm. or getting to know them. Um, so there's a lot that goes into that, but there is, there is a formula there because I mean, as an investor, um, depending on kind of what you're looking for, you, you do want a certain market size. You know, if, even mm -hmm. if you're an angel investor and you're thinking that, you know, there might be an exit at some point, the market has to be at least big enough for what you're, you're, you know, kind of anticipating that this business mm -hmm. could be. And, you know, and, and it's interesting that a lot of founders, they'll, they'll even leave out you know, the, the market slide, you know, how big is this market? And is it yeah, like your enough TAM potential, your yeah. TAM, SAM, SOM. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there, there, is, there, there's a formula of what you need to include in your presentation to potential investors. And Tim has written the book, um, yes. the pitch deck book. Yes. And at the very least, I mean, that, you know, you read through Tim's book and you're going to hit all of the key points that you have to have in your presentation. Okay. And so, you know, definitely worth going through that and making sure you don't miss, you know, yeah. talking about your team or talking about, you know, you know, defining what the, the real problem is before you jump into the, you know, talking about how great your product is yeah, yeah, yeah. your solution or whatever. Now, how do you kind of look past a charismatic founder to like really mm -hmm. feel like, all right. Cause like, do, like you sold me, Jeff, like you're cool. But like, now that I see this, like you, you probably, there's some more due diligence and I know there's like a bunch of legal due diligence, I'm sure. But like, how do you, how do you kind of take a step back from being wowed by a charismatic founder to like really dig into like the meat of the business? Yeah. Good question. And sometimes that plays into it. You want a charismatic founder. I mean, they, they, should be the best salesperson out there because this is their vision and their, yeah. their that. And so you kind of want to see that um, because they're going to be the ones building this, this company. Yeah. And so you almost need that. Okay. Um, but at the same time, if it's all, you know, they're super hyped up and, and excited about something that really, you know, isn't going to work yeah. in, in your mind, then that probably doesn't, makes sense. Yeah. On the flip side, I think you could see a founder if they've got that, you know, that passion combined with the will, the, the willingness to pivot and to learn and, and kind of yeah. go down that path. Um, sometimes you're kind of looking for that as well. Yeah. You know, will this person solve this problem? Is it a big enough problem to, you know, be worth solving? Yeah. And are they passionate enough to get through all of the you know, the hurdles <laughs> and pivot when they might need to pivot. Cause yeah. at the earliest stages, when a founder presents their idea and their, you know, plan and everything, you know, that it's not going to go to plan. And that's <laughs> the one thing you can, you can guarantee yeah, is that yeah, yeah. how you've laid this out and what your, you know, sales projections are and all of this stuff going forward. We know that's a hundred percent wrong. Um, but, um, are you the type of founder that can, you know, kind of go the next step and learn and then iterate and maybe pivot if you mm -hmm. need to. And so early on, you really are taking the, taking a bet on the the founder. Yeah. Cause so, it's, cause it's mainly him. Cause yeah, I mean, I would imagine that you go like you present V1 of your business and you're going to, at, at exit, it's V100 or whatever. Yes. Yeah, basically. <laughs> hey, you've probably okay. pivoted a few times and maybe even scrapped things. Uh, yeah. you know, it's like, okay, we went down this path and we learned yeah. that this isn't the right direction. Yeah. Um, we, but we, we also learned that we could go here and this is what the market wants. When somebody has a business, because uh, not everybody should go for fundraising. Not everybody should look right. for investors. Yep. So how do you know? So 
one is if you can get to cash flow without taking any any capital, yeah, then fantastic. Have you ever have you ever had that where somebody like shows their traction in market and you're like they're just killing it? Oh yeah, and like, you're like, why and, would you take? Yeah, and you're like, why do you, well, yeah, why do you want this? Yeah, <laughs> and and especially I think you also have to step back and say, okay, do you want what comes with funding? That's that was it, right? Because I was hoping you talk about this. Yeah, and and, <laughs> and a lot of people they don't they don't realize what comes with funding. Yeah. Um, and so they just see that, well, you know, everybody's out there and they've got a business that's, you know, my business is doing better than theirs and they yeah. just raised, you know, $10 million. Yeah. And so I should be able to raise $20 million. Yeah. It's like, why? And you're like, yeah. okay, but what comes with that and why, what, what would you do with $20 million? And is that going to, you know, get you a much bigger pie? Yeah. Um, because you're going to have a smaller piece. Yeah. Cause I've talked pie. to people on both sides of the fence, right? Like I talked to people who just, who love the, you know, who love debt funding, mm -hmm. right. And who love, and then other people who love equity funding. And it's kind of, I was just talking to my wife about this. Cause I, you know, I, I'm enough, I'm around enough people who raise money yeah. to, to kind of see what happens. And it's like, that's why I like, I almost prefer debt personally, just because like, if it's me in a bank, like they know, I know exactly what I own that month. And then I don't hear from them. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. if they get paid, we're all cool. Right. And that's the kind of the agreement at the beginning is if you pay me, we're, we're all like, there's going to be terms, interest rate, whatever. If you pay me, we're good. But it almost feels like, and I, and not every investor is like this, certainly, but it's almost like what you mentioned, right? Like what comes with investing? You have a lot of people who want to be involved in the business now because a lot of their money is at stake or whatever. Gotcha, VC yeah. is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if it's I, Angel, maybe not as a PE or, or a VC or something like that, but, but certainly there's going to be some people who want their hands in the pie. Yeah. And, and again, that's something you'd have to look at as a founder, yeah. you know, what level of, of involvement is this investor going to be? If they're a strategic investor, then you want them involved, right? Yeah. Um, if you're just wanting capital to make <laughs> this thing work and to hire some people or, or do something, um, you probably don't want them coming in and telling you how to run your business. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's where, but as you're raising capital, a lot of times you'll give up board seats, for example. And so now mm. you don't have the decision-making authority, you know, for every single thing in your company. Mm -hmm. So you're giving up some control that way. Um, I, but well, I, think, I mean, and sometimes that's okay, right? Like oh, you mentioned totally. strategic or whatever. Yeah, right? strategically. Yeah. And you've got experience and, yeah. and that coming in to help guide that. And that's a great thing. Um, at the same time, not every founder is set out to, you know, now jump into this venture timeline, let's say yeah. where, okay, we just gave you $10 million. <laughs> right. um, we don't want that $10 million just sitting in the bank for the next three years. You know, we want you to go spend it and we want, right. you have to know how <laughs> you're going to invest it, yeah. where you're going to put it. And we want you to do it quickly. Yeah. And so now it goes from, you know, the stakes are a lot higher and you need to move a lot faster and as a founder, I mean, that puts a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, that's crazy. Not every founder wants that. Yeah. Um, and, and if, and, and, you know, yeah. it makes sense. I mean, right. If you've got a good thing going and you don't want to have somebody saying, you know, you missed your numbers last month, what's going on? <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, that yeah. might not be the right path for you. Right, right, right. Especially as somebody like I'm somebody who's harder on myself than probably anybody. But to have that extra, like if you're not up and to the right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know if I can. <laughs> well, that's because like I tried for a little bit. I was like, maybe, maybe we can do this. We have a little company that and I was like, man, I don't know. Because I, so I because I related it back to like, um, you know, it's all cool. Like to see. Uh, I remember when I worked at a company called Cloud App and we yeah. were right under we were right under. Um, the crypto tax company. What was their name? Moon Tax. No, no, no. Oh, tax, tax uh, bit. Tax bit. Oh, we were really? right under tax bit. Really, the day that they raised their Series B, of like a hundred million. Yes. I don't know, their oh, biggest like round. A, you remember that? It was a hundred million dollar Series A. Yes, hundred million dollar yeah. Series A. One of the biggest ones at the time. And I remember we were all working underneath, and we just hear the roof just starts shaking. Everybody's yelling people. And then the next week they all moved out. <laughs> I was like, good for you. But I just remember when they got the phone call, we did it. We closed it. Everybody's wow. yelling. And I was like, holy cow. And you're like, that's cool. Right. But 
But then you got all of that that comes with, right? Because a hundred million dollars well, is a small number. Like now, oh no, yeah, it's not even a lot higher. It's not even the beginning when that when yeah. that funding hits, right? <laughs> yeah, and and you think about it. I mean, the valuation that is placed on your company, yeah, probably kind of forward looking, and so you've got to make sure you're hitting the the numbers to the revenue justify to that. Justify you, yeah, um, and if things go wrong, all of a sudden your investors feel like they're underwater, and the pressure goes up. Um, oh I couldn't so, imagine that. So, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, but at the same time, you've now got, you've proven mm -hmm. that it's kind of validating because you've got somebody that said, you know, we'll give you a hundred million dollars to, to, uh, you know, we're entrusting this to you mm. to go out and, you know, we believe in your plan enough that you presented to us that we think this is worth a, a shot. Yeah, whatever, right. And so now you've got a lot more to work with um, to make a bigger impact. Wow. That's insane though. Yeah. I just, it's crazy. But, but I remember, but then I also remember thinking and uh, like kind of growing from that. Cause I, you know, I've worked for a couple startups. So I worked for cloud app, worked for a company called via um, and, and, you know, dirty does raising a little bit of money. Um, I think maybe not, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I've just been in that, the, those rooms, those conversations every once in a while. And I'm like, Dang, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> so I was just like, you know what? I'll just uh, cause I like I like uh seeing that though. But you I, I just think that what I what I love to hear from people in your position are like not everybody should do this. <laughs> oh, it's it's definitely in fact a very small percentage of yeah. entrepreneurs would raise venture capital. Yeah. And the venture capital firms know that too. I mean, because yeah. and if you look at venture capital as as you know, the hundred million dollar Mm -hmm. you know, series A, um, that is so rare. Right. And right, very right. few companies yes, could yes. actually, you know, take that on and really, you right. know, work with series that. A series A is usually under 10 or well, eight maybe. Come, yeah. It's kind of come down even with the recent market in terms well, of yeah, I'm sure series A is probably what sub five maybe. Um, I mean, you're, you're starting to see it compress a little bit. It's probably okay. still in that 10, you know, maybe, kind of an yeah. average of 10, 10 million, but yeah. again, it ranges from all yeah, over yeah, the place. Yeah. It could be a hundred million. Thinking, you know, cause I'm thinking, well, I hear that, right. And you're like, man, I, I think I'm going to, we're going to do some angel. We're going to do some seed and then we're going to get a series A. I'm like, I don't even know what I do with $10 million. Like I wouldn't, <laughs> there's no, there's nothing I could do to make, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause like, I think that's the other thing that, and maybe you can tell me if I'm wrong, cause I'm learning with you in this interview, because I feel like, um, sometimes like, a quick ca cash injection doesn't, isn't the problem solved like that. It, it's not the answer. Often it's not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you it, just think, yeah, people think it is. It's right? like, we need money. And I think the first question that most investors ask is why, why do you need money? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, if you, if it's for a purpose, like, okay, we can't afford this, you know, these certain individuals um, and by hiring them, we're going to get to this next level or it's, you know, maybe it's inventory. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, maybe it's it's different things. But there's also you have to realize that venture capital is not the only way to get right. money. Yeah, I exactly. mean, it is one way, <laughs> but at very few companies it makes sense for. And one of the things I think it's important for founders to realize is that for venture capital, um, you really have to have a let's say a billion dollar idea. Right. Yeah. This has got it. You can't have a, you know, we're going to be at, you know, a five million dollar company in three years. Um, that's yeah. not that exciting for a venture capital firm that mm -hmm. is investing. You know, basically they they have to look at every every investment as having the potential to return their entire fund. It's kind of how an investor yeah. cap uh, investor you know venture capital. I, I think when I was going through my MBA, that was the thing that shocked me the most was that VCs kind of expect that only ten percent, ten to twenty percent make it. Yeah, and and when you say make it, it's you know the billion dollar what's, exit. What's or the big yeah. you know billion dollar exit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what which of the companies have the potential, <laughs> and it's only going to be a very small percentage of those that mm -hmm. are are that one, and those are the ones they double down on, and then yeah. keep going. And, you know, reinvesting in and, um, and if you're not that one, then you may have a short, short life and they, you might not get the next round of funding because they, they're, you've lost that confidence that this is the one that's going to, you know, return yeah, the fund for us. Or, that's crazy, huh? And so it's kind of, in, in some ways it, it can be an all or nothing game, um, 
which again, isn't right for every company. Yeah. I mean, if I've got yeah. a company that can make money and, you know, and, and give me a good lifestyle, I might be better off getting, growing this company to $5 million a year as opposed to $50 million a year Yeah, where I'll get diluted over that time period. And, you know, yeah. maybe that the company doesn't even have the potential to get there. Yeah. And so you, you never would raise venture capital. Well, I knew, yeah, you would never raise a lot of that. Or I, I think what's always interesting about these kinds of conversations is like, everybody thinks they want to be that. Yeah. And what I've learned and what, and so the original thesis of this podcast was to ca- avoid that thought process because everybody wants to be Warren Buffett or, or like, I want to, I want to live Warren Buffett's lifestyle, Jeff Bezos, Elon, whoever, right? Like at, name your celebrity that's famous on Instagram right now. And I'm like, and, and so I actually, so I've had Tim Cooley on the podcast. I've also had Mark America Smith on the podcast. Oh, really? And Mark, okay. and Mark just uh, posted this. Him and I have a very similar idea. He was in a classroom. His post said he was in a classroom and he asked a bunch of high schoolers, like who they looked up to. And it was like Elon and all these people. And he was like, do you know that so-and-so's dad has a $20 million business? He's like, that's crazy, but you want to be these guys. But like this guy lives right next door and you all love going over to their or whatever. Right. Um, you miss so much of like what's actually possible when you try to like, I'm going to be the next tax bit, raise a hundred yeah. million series a, it's like, not only is that so small of a percentage, I don't think, I don't think it's happened since. I don't think, I, I think when tax bit hit it, it, it almost never happened. <laughs> and so you're like, dude, you're trying to be the, the guy when you could make a comfortable $5 million a year business. Well, and, and I think there's another side to that is the, the yeah, lifestyle, please. right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you know, do you want to, you know, how, how much are you going to put into this? Cause, cause if at an early stage, you, you ask any startup founder <laughs> and all the glamour and glamour stuff that you think of when you think of founder and I started this company, Jeez. ask them what they've been through. Yeah. And every one of them, I will say it's tough. It is hard work and there's, and you have to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember Blake Murray from Divi. Okay. Yeah. He basically said, um, he said <laughs> the myth of, of work-life balance is there's, there yeah. is yeah, no there such is thing as a founder. Yeah. There is no work-life balance. It is, yeah. you are all in Yeah, and uh, don't kid yourself. And, yeah. and it's tough. It's tough on relationships. It's tough on, yeah. you know, on. I can only imagine. Well, and that was the, that was the idea is like, I remember um, being in a sales position where I was in outside sales. Yeah. And I was traveling a week and a half out of every month. So I was only with my family like two and a half weeks and that was it. And I was like, I did it for six months and I was like, I can't do this. Right. And I was like, but then you hear like, you know, some people want to be speakers. They want to be like this guy who's in three cities in two days. And you're like, have you ever done that though? Every day of the month? Have you been to, to, have you been to fit 40 cities in a month? That's terrible. (laughs) I would not want to do at all. I would rather have fun on LinkedIn. (laughs) <laughs> you know, but, you know, but like, that's personally me, right? Some people yes. dig that. Some people oh, totally. are like, cool. But I'm just saying like, and, and I think what you're trying to say is like, you got to really figure out if this is what you want to do, because if it is, then you're in for a rough yeah, and, and You know, I mean, it, it would be hard to say, go in with your eyes wide open because you don't know. <laughs> but so and like maybe it. if you did know everything that you'd go through, maybe you wouldn't do it. But, sure. um, but it's that passion yeah. That, and there's an excitement to it. It's like, Oh, we're going to make it, we're going to make it work. And yeah, I want to solve it. this problem. And I think that's what drives entrepreneurs. And that's what's, what's fun about, yeah. you know, the space as yeah. well is it's very optimistic and you know, we, you, you are around people that want to change the world and make a big impact. Yeah. Um, and, and there's, I mean, we need people like that. Yeah. Well, and I, I just, I just, I'm, I'm always like a realist in those conversations though. Cause I talk with people like, cause I've looked at myself, I've had to look at myself and be like, is that kind of like what I want to do? And for me, the answer ended up being no, like right. surprisingly, like as bad as I wanted to do that kind of thing, I was like, man, I don't, you know, maybe that's, I'm not that guy, but I also don't think that that's a bad thing. Cause like, then you got Blake Murray and you got all these guys who are the guy. Oh, totally. And that's great, dude. Like, and, and, and what's crazy it. is that, 
you'll probably see a lot of times it's kind of gets in your blood and you, you think, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. um, that was hard. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you have an exit or whatever, and it's like, that was hard. And then it seems like it's all worth it. Um, yeah, yeah, after, yeah. After it's in, and then you look back and go, oh, you know, there were some good things. You kind of remember the good. Um, <laughs> Win, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but History's written by the victor. <laughs> yeah. And, but most <laughs> most entrepreneurs will kind of go back for more. And, yeah. And it's, it, it is kind of gets yeah. in your blood. And you kind of like the being around that and having having the opportunity to make a difference. Well, and, and what I think is cool about that is like, you never really start over on anything. You're always you, learning. You Well, yeah, you come in with every, like if I, you know, like if today all my jobs went away, I'm not starting from zero. I'm right. starting with 10 years of sales experience. Yep. So like, why wouldn't you? Like, yeah. th that would be the easiest thing for me to do. <laughs> so it's almost like you have to go back, right? It is. I mean, it's kind of, <laughs> and... You know, I, it's really interesting because, um, I mean, I look at my, my own experience oh. where, uh, my wife started a company and I came in and helped her raise some capital and, and, uh, we grew this company pretty quickly and, you know, from the outside it probably looked pretty glamorous and, uh -huh. you know, it's like, wow, you're running this, this big you're company like and everything. It's like, like wow. That. And, um, what nobody sees is the stress and the challenges and yeah. what goes along with that. And you look back and you're like, I mean, there were hard times. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was tough. And I remember after we sold that company, I took a little break and then I went, uh, I ended up getting to know the folks at Carta. And okay, yeah. so I ended up joining Carta kind of um, cool. fairly early, but, uh, but I remember going into work and just feeling like it was so easy and calm. It was like, and, and I would stay there. So yeah. I remember people at five o'clock would hit and people started leaving. And I'm like, where's everybody going? Yeah. It's like, this is crazy. Yeah. I can't believe people are leaving. Yeah. And, uh, and it just felt like I told people it, it kind of feels like a vacation. It's like, I'm like, <laughs> I know what I need to do and I can actually go home and yeah. And, and I don't have to worry about like, it. Like it's not my gig. People aren't <laughs> calling me saying, Hey, our servers are down or whatever emergency. Wow. Um, there was kind of that sense of relief mm -hmm. um, of, wow, I don't have to worry about all that. Yeah. Um, that, it's so interesting. So let's kind of talk about maybe uh, you were at the tacos together event. Yes. Uh, there was, a, I think, I, I don't, think I did a very good job of preparing for what that event was going to be or what did it end up being, you know, but you know, you talk a lot about stress and it's very stressful as a founder Yep. and, 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 and mental health and well being is a big thing right now as it should be. Yep. And that's, I'm not downplaying that at all. I'm wondering how much coaching goes into these founders, like be ready for that and how you maybe do you, help them with co coping strategies or do you, do you like, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, th I don't know. You know what I mean? Cause like some people handle stress really well. Yeah. And, and they, and, and, and I think there's a difference between like stress and urgency. Right. Yeah. But, but it's a pretty gray line. <laughs> it's a pretty blurry <laughs> line. Right. But some people handle really well. Some people don't. And so when you see somebody like an owner just losing their mind, do you ever have tough conversations? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've had those conversations with, with my son who has started a company. Yeah. Jaron and shout out to, shout out to Dojo. Yeah. Oh. Sells Dojo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, he calls me all the time, dad, I don't know if I can keep doing this. Um, <laughs> it's stressful, yeah. right? It's like <laughs> every decision is rolling up to him and it's like when things aren't going well, it's like, it feels like the weight of the world. And fortunately I, you know, I've been through a lot of that and I, we can kind of reset expectations kind mm -hmm. of pull back and go, okay, what are the two things you need to focus on? It's yeah. like, let's get rid of all the noise and what are, right. you know, and, and so he's got a life coach, um, oh, that he, he recently engaged. It's been amazing. He's like, I love this. Yeah. Um, and, and so things like that are really helpful. I think the other thing that's helpful for founders is to be around other founders yeah. because, um, they can relate, they can relate to what you're going through and the stress and, yeah. and all that. And I think it's, sometimes it's, it's good because you're like, okay, this is, I'm not the only one yeah, going yeah, through yeah. this, right? Being a founder can be really lonely. 
Um, yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. I mean, I, I experienced that at, uh, with, with our company when, in fact, after we sold the company, even I had to stay on for three years and, um, there were things that were happening at the company that, you know, I couldn't really talk to the employees about. Um, of course. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that either. Like, yeah. You and there's certain things that yeah, you're you like, can't. okay, I'm not going to because share this with all the employees. Not because right you now. don't want to be transparent. I want to make this pretty clear because yeah. a lot of people don't understand this. There's, it's not because I'm trying to lie or deceive no, or like be no, there. No, it's just, all. we can't cross that line. Like if we start crossing those kinds of lines, then. Well, and, that, and that's what yeah. they're, they've got the trust in you as the leader that things are going to be okay. And right. And so if you start, if you start going, I don't know if the we're going to on fire. It. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't want everybody to jump off and then it exactly. becomes self-fulfilling prophecy and right. Exactly. And it doesn't exactly. Work. But at the same time, there are stresses yeah. that, you know, you, you don't really share with, with your employees because mm-hmm. um, they, they don't want to. They don't need it. Yeah, you yeah, don't need. Yeah, you don't need to care them or them you don't need to have, yeah. because you're going to figure it out. But right, it's stressful. But you need time too. You need like, hey, look, this just happened, and we need yes. a day or two to figure this. Yeah. <laughs> so right now it looks bad, but in a day it's going to be fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you go yeah, through yeah. that stress, right. and exactly. you're kind of yeah, alone yeah, yeah. because yeah, exactly. you know, yeah. Um, there are certain things that you know you're probably not going to tell your board. Um, you know, I mean, you want to be transparent on the things that matter, stuff, right? But, but you don't want to like prematurely, you know, cause chaos. No, it's exactly. like that. S, it's like that SVB yes. thing. Yeah. You don't want to cause <laughs> the guy a put run, out a, right? Yeah. The guy posted and he was like, don't withdraw your money. And then everybody was like, that's I see what you're trying to say. Line, yeah. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Run. <laughs> uh. But no, I think that's a big conversation that I have with people. Why didn't you just do that? I'm like, because we just don't have all the info yet. Like, yeah, we need more info before I, before we yeah. start. But, but again, when you don't have all the info yet, exactly. You know, you don't want to scare the employees or the board or, the board or, or your family. Or your family. Like, <laughs> and so you kind of take that on yourself yeah. yeah. and while you're waiting for the more information to come in that yeah. you can process and, and figure things out. But still bottom line is it's stressful. Um, and so yeah. having a life coach, um, having, you know, other founders that you can kind of talk to, they get it. And mm-hmm. you can talk to other founders and they're like, oh man, that's tough. Um, yeah, they can really empathize. And, and they're not going to, you know, they're not going to react. So you're, you're in a safe zone, right? They're yeah, not going to yeah, go, yeah. you know, sound the fire bell to right. the rest of the employees or to whatever. <laughs> Cause they're, they're, the they're just, gonna, yeah, they're, exactly. They're probably in the same spot. So wow, that's why I, I love like accelerators or yeah. groups of like masterminds or something. Masterminds that's where cool. you can get with other founders that are probably going through the same things you are. Yeah. Um, and they can at least at the very least they can relate. And there's just a, a great support network yeah. among founders for that reason. It's kind of like, you know, you go you got through to. tough, you know, you go through, you know, war together, or you go through yeah. whatever. It, there's kind of that common bond. Yeah, I think so. And I think, I mean, that's just what people should think about. And that's all I'm saying, because that's what I did. I was like, you know what, actually, I went through my own mental exercises and, and my own uh, meditating. And I was just like, yeah, man, you know, like what. So what's always interesting when we get to these conversations is like, should I start a business? Should I raise money? Should I X, Y, Z? Is like, yeah. I think what inevitably starts to come up in these conversations is like, what does it mean to be happy to you? Like, what is like, You're are right. you going to be happy doing this? Yeah. I, I mean, because, and, and happy is probably not the right word, but like, can you find a way to find peace in all of this? If it, you know, I'd like, I'm, I, I love stoicism, the philosophy of stoicism. Okay. Right. So yep. one of the stoic principles is summum bonum, which is the, or excuse me, that, that is one of them, but uh, premeditatum malorum, which is meditate on the evils that will come. Okay. Which is very counterintuitive, right? Because you would, you would, all the life coaches and gurus will say like, put your Positive. dream vacation <laughs> on your, dr- on oh, your gotcha. you know what I'm saying? But like, I look at it like this, like I make all of my decisions. Like if this went to zero, would I be okay? And would It'll I be, be happy? Right. Yeah. And if the answer is yes, then I'm all in. But that allows me to like fully commit because if it goes to zero, I already like, I'm good. I'm cool. You're, you're still all right. We're good. You're still okay. Yeah. Yeah. If it makes it though. Right. So the question, so that counterintuitive approach allows me to ask myself like, but what if it works? You love it. You love it. And so yeah. I like, 
Um, <laughs> so these conversations, like what does happiness really mean to you? And if, and if you were a founder and you, and you got to this point where you had a million, a billion dollar company, and then for whatever reason, because it's happened that it just goes to zero in one day, like, would you be cool? <laughs> right. That's a tough question. That is tough. That's a, yep. but, but I mean, like, I'm not saying like expect that to happen, but I, but it's like, I don't well, know. What do you yeah, think? And, and yeah. What do you think? Good to, to think about that and say, you know, reflect. I'm sure you do it as an okay. investor. Oh like, yeah. You have do, to, do you look at, do you look there at the deal and be like, if this goes to zero, am I going to be cool? <laughs> I think you have to. Yeah. I mean, because there's a good chance that, that, that they will. Yeah. Right. I mean, what's the percentage of a unicorn being well, successful? I mean, it, well, it used to be what, you know, Oh gosh, in Utah it was different. One percent or so. <laughs> I mean, less than that's less than one percent, and then you know, I think yeah. it's gone up in, in recent Probably. years, and, and and I guess it's where you start measuring it. But I mean, mm -hmm. very rare. So that's why they say unicorn, right? Yeah, unicorn, it's very yeah. rare. Yeah, but um, you know, I, I I just think that you have to you have to be okay if something goes wrong, that's why you diversify, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I think you can do the yeah. kind of the same thing in life that you've, you know, if you put all of your eggs in one basket <laughs> and it, and it, you yeah. know, goes to zero, then, you know, you don't have anything left. Right. Are there other things in your life, whether it's relationships or, mm. you know, whatever else that, you know, are still yeah. well, going to be around? That's what I get a lot of flack on in my personal life because, you know, you see like on LinkedIn, somebody's why, like 90% of the time someone's why is their family. Right. <laughs> yes, that's really true. Yeah. Mine isn't. And the reason is because if I was super successful and I lost, if I had a billion dollar company, I lost every day, my family would still be there. Yeah. And I would be able to give my family everything that they needed. It'd still be, with, still be there. With yeah. a billion or without a billion. Yeah. So I, but I always get a lot of flack for that. Right. Well, don't you want your kids and blah, blah, blah. And my, my kids already have everything. Well, it, it actually brings up a good point. This is a different topic, but uh, no, no, please if open you're it up. cool with the pivot. No, absolutely. Um, but if you look at it, is if your family, if you wanted to give your family a billion dollars, yeah. is that really giving them, I mean, is that really doing them a favor? Yeah. Um, well, like we were talking about earlier, is money the answer? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. When you, when you look at it that way, I mean, you go, man, if I, if I could give my kids a billion dollars when I leave, would yeah. that really be doing them a favor? Well, because, you know, on that thought, um, I've interviewed, I've had over 300 hours of interviews with founders and yeah. business owners. They have all gone through hard times at the beginning. Yep. And the one question and the, the same, there's one pattern across all 300, at least one. And that's, they would not do it over again, or they would not do it any differently. Oh, Cause you have to, yeah, it's part of your story. Part like story. that's part of your yep. story. And like, I grew up poor in Iowa, yeah. one of the poorest counties in Iowa. I wouldn't change anything about my childhood because it made me who I was. Yeah. And so like, if I, if that did that for me and it's done it for over 270 plus people that I've interviewed, like, why would I give my kids <laughs> all of that? Like you have to, you're, you're taken away from yeah. them in a lot of cases. And yeah. And that's, that's so anyway, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. One thing that, that's <laughs> kind of interesting and challenging is that I think sometimes we, you know, we get confused on our why it's like, am I really doing this for my kids? Am I really, you know, yeah. working all the time for my kids? Um, I mean, I work a lot and of course, um, and I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's probably more for me than my, than my kids or my wife or anybody else. 100%. I, I enjoy. That's how I know, find fulfillment. Doing what I'm doing. Yeah. My kids, my, my kids roast me they, in front they, of everybody. Your dad is always working. You're always working. Dad's yeah, always working. Thing. My, my, my kids would love it if I stayed home 24 seven, they would be okay if they had breakfast, lunch, and dinner and, you and their shows and I, and we're just there. And you're just hanging out. And you don't need a million dollars a year salary to do that. <laughs> right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you actually, and here's what's trippy. And this is why, I mean, I think it's why it's just so important to go through these thought exercises is because like, for me, it's like, what, A, what is hap happiness really? And then like, what actually do you need to accomplish that? Like I had a founder on, um, he has like a, a thousand Airbnb doors or whatever. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he was like, he grew up poor. He shared a room with three brothers and sisters and they were super happy. He's like, I can be happy in a two bedroom apartment with nine family members. I don't need this. I want this. And I think that changes so much of the trajectory of where you go in life. 
Yeah, that's fascinating. I, I love that. Trippy. I huh? love hearing that. But like, I, I think back to my childhood. My, the, I had a five, we had a five bedroom, three bathroom, 3,500 3, square foot in Iowa. It was $80,000. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. <laughs> we were ha- we were ha- like, nobody had a new anything in my hometown. 90% of the people were on food stamps. Almost 100% of the school was on free or reduced lunches. Like that was my life. And we found a way to be happy and have fun. Like, I don't need a million dollars to chill. You know yeah, what I'm saying? To go play in the, the river or the <laughs> whatever. Or, so. It's just interesting to think about. Yeah, that, that really is. And and again, I think sometimes we we kid ourselves and say, you know, I'm I'm doing all this, I'm sacrificing all this for for you, it for doesn't matter. Our yeah. family or whatever. Isn't it's that like no, we can we can be happy and we can learn yeah. how to be happy even even without all, all of, this. of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But it is fulfilling for me. Yeah, and if it's fulfilling yeah. for me and I'm doing this and I'm and there's you know, purpose making a difference and stuff like or purpose. That. Yeah. I think that's, that's a different good. conversation. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what, but but it's just how many times have you seen that as like because you've been married for quite a long time. we we all know people who are, I've been married. How many times do you hear see that conversation on social media of the guy who's like, I'm doing all this for you, and the wife's like, No, you're not, because all I want is you. <laughs> right. And you're like, and there's the huge disconnect there, but it was, you know, and that's, I'm not, we don't need to dive into all that, but I'm just saying it's, it's just interesting. Yeah. I like yeah. how you said that. I like how you said, like, don't kid yourself. Don't like, kid yourself. Just, uh, just I'm, for doing us, this, man. I'm doing this for me. I, I, I enjoy nothing working. wrong with that. And yeah. I told you know, him, my, in yeah. fact, it's kind of funny. Cause my, my kids, they've, they both said, you know, you work way too much. I can't believe all <laughs> you work. So just this last week, <laughs> my daughter calls me up and she goes, dad, guess what? <laughs> I'm like, what, Callan? <laughs> She's like, I, w- my day was so packed today that I couldn't even eat lunch. Or, and yeah. She was telling me how, you know, I got this new opportunity here and then and this happened. And, you know, this is my daughter that tells me I work too much. <laughs> and um, like, welcome to the club. <laughs> she, she's like, dad, I was so busy. I couldn't even take a break to eat lunch. And I have the, all these new things that I have to do. I'm going to be so busy tomorrow and all this. And I go, and how do you feel? She's like, I love it. She's like, this is the first time I've ever figured out why you like to work. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you have something that you love doing. Yes. You're yeah. like, yeah, I, I don't know. Healthy or not healthy. I don't know. I've had many days where I missed food, man. You right. just love it. I don't right. know. Just, you're fine. And that's the other thing is like, you're, you're, you'll be fine. You don't need that much food. Um, uh, <laughs> but isn't that interesting? I love this conversation. I really appreciate you being here, Jeff. Oh, this is great. Yeah. yeah it's fun to chat with yeah, you. Yeah. Holy cow. Um, but before I let you go, you've been more than generous with your time. I want to, I want to make sure we respect it. But before you go, where, where can everybody find you? Get involved in some of the projects, like plug whatever you want to plug. Oh, totally. So uh, a couple of things that I'm doing these days. Um, one is I started something called uh, the startup stack. Um, you can find the startup stack at mystartupstack.com. If you're a startup founder, what we've done is we've created this uh, marketplace where founders can go to get huge discounts and um, oh. on software or other tools that are specifically for startup founders. So most companies, they they know that startup founders can't afford full price for their, their stuff. And so they'll give dif- deep discounts or um, even let you use some of their stuff for free. Um, we've created a marketplace where you can find all that. So if you want, you know, to get a better deal on, on any of the tools that will Mm -hmm. help you, you know, increase the likelihood of success for your startup, go to mystartupstack.com and it's free, um, for founders. And it's kind of a, kind of a cool thing that we've put together. So it's been fun, fun project. Cool. And where can everybody follow you? And you can always follow me on LinkedIn. Um, just, you know, Jeff Erickson at LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> Sweet. Find me out there. Yeah. Cool. Well, awesome. Thanks for being here, Jeff. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. 